Okay, Kylie, thanks for the personal delivery. What, 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 what have you brought me? All right, Susanna, thank you so much for your beautiful, beautiful order. Yes. I've got for you. This one is a pork shoulder roast with the bone in, <gasps> slow cooked in your aga. Oh, That's yummy! That'll be amazing. good. Honey and cloves. Yes. Very and then nice. apple sauce. Oh yes, and then we have here is a pork fillet. Okay. Leg. A leg. This is all from the same pig. Yes. Uh, a pig that I think you might have actually seen when you came to. Oh, when I did the film earlier. Um, no, last was it last year or this year? Uh, November of last year. Yeah, it would have been one of those. Pigs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because uh, this is a pork hock. Okay. Which again, you can cook slowly. Uh, slowly, so the meat falls, falls off, off the bone. Yeah, yeah. This one now is um, this is a, a boneless shoulder, which oh, will be lovely. beautifully cooked, thin slicey, maybe even on oh. some sourdough. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can't do sourdough, but other people can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, you're um, okay. These ones are my favorite, personal favorite. These are the frozen pork chops. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Frozen pork chops by two. Oh, two sets. Excellent. And then these are just a little add-in to throw into the aga and forget about for a couple of hours. These are <gasps> pork, pork crackling! And Yay! In the oven in your aga for a few hours and then come back. They are just like a bit of salt over the top of them and OMG, they are going to oh be Oh my goodness, so good. I think they are going to be so good. And I know you said don't. But this is my own uh, rose hip and <gasps> apple jelly that I finally Ooh. perfected in turning into a solid jelly. Ooh. So you have to try this. It's just um, rose hip, apples from our garden, and then a little bit of sugar. <gasps> it is really good. That the color is isn't beautiful. It, isn't it just gorgeous? The and color is so admit, beautiful. That took me about six or seven goes to actually get that perfected. So what you do is you put it all into your pot on top of the aga. Yeah. And it sits there, bubbles away until the apples disintegrate, the rose hips disintegrate, and then you put it into, I put it into a pillowcase. And then you hang it. Oh yes. And then it drips through. And then no, we used to have that. My grandfather used to do that with uh, currants, red currants, and black currants. And oh, he'd have yeah. two chairs. Yeah, that's and what it I would did. drip between the chairs. Yeah. And we always used to love to terrify the guests and yeah, say yeah. there's a head dripping yeah, through yeah, 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 because yeah. it would look like it was dripping Drop a pool blood. of blood yeah, yeah. into a bowl. So it was I so set, awful. I set up like a clothes hanger. Yeah. And then I hung my pillowcase. Yeah. And um. I hung my pillowcase and then I had a, a bucket underneath it and I was telling my kids when I was a little girl, I remember getting my head under the pillowcase and licking the bottom of it. My mom, when I told her that was furious, horrified, but I can assure you I didn't lick the bottom of the pillowcase. No, well, thank you. So <laughs> glad you didn't lick the bottom of the pillowcase. You hold it but I mean, the light, so look at that. It is this gorgeous yeah, color. Yeah, so you could put it with the pork, but you could have it on toast. Oh, okay. I could definitely. Gluten-free toast. Gluten-free toast. Gluten yeah. toast. So thank that you That is so fantastic. Much. Thank you so much for your order. This all came from the one pig, and it was completely grown on our farm, just on organic pasture, and we only feed them fermented oats. That's their kind of day-to-day -day yeah, food. Yeah. And we don't finish them on any sort of concentrate or any sort of soy or corn or anything yeah. like that. So it's based mostly pasture raised. Mostly pasture raised, very natural. And what happens with that is uh, they're a traditional breed, so they don't put on weight very quickly. So yeah. this, which breed this, are they? Um, this pig would have been an Oxford Sandy and Black crossed with uh, um, an Old Spot. So it's kind of a mixture of old traditional breeds. Yeah, and then that kind of gives them a little bit of hybrid vigor. And then they, this one, I think... It's got a, a nice um, layer of fat, a really nice... And I mean, what's so nice about pasture-raised pork and pigs is 
that that fat is really high in nutrition and yeah. all those kind of um, delicious vitamins and minerals yeah. that you don't get on soya intensive fed grain fed pigs. Exactly, and I'm not a scientist, but I do believe that the fat from here has a special balance of omega three to omega six, which means in comparison, actually, yes, yeah, which actually means it's it's actually good for you. So don't waste. I know oh you no, won't I won't waste food. any of the fat. I mean, to me, that kind of fat and it's got beautiful. And if we look at that there. there so sometimes fat. when you buy pork, they'll yeah. take the skin off. Yes, the rind fat, bit. The fat might be out to here and they'll skin it back so it looks like it hasn't been too fat. Yeah. But that is actually, that is how fat it was. So it's got you can that. see on here, yeah. the skin is on it. Yes. And that's because they're not fed on a concentrate. So they really are just growing at a natural pace and yeah. at a natural sort of rate. So the last pig we took in, um, the butcher said the same thing. They just have a really beautiful covering of fat. And it's a lanes. beautiful color. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a beautiful, when you get the real good grass-based system fat on a sheep, a cow or a pig or even yeah. a chicken. Yeah. It's really a beautiful color. And and I think it's down to the fact that it's so natural as in they're not confined. Yes. Uh, and you rotate graze them. So you mm. like your chickens, you move the mm. fence so that they continually yeah. get fresh pasture all the time so it's not like they're wallowing in the same location. Yeah, because I kind of think that's uh you know, that in itself is probably highly unnatural. No animal would ever stay in the same spot. No, they wouldn't. Defecate manure, we lie all in, in the, the same, same spot. Yeah. They, they kind of camp somewhere and then they move on to the next spot. Yeah. So we're trying to replicate that and we use the same system. We have electric fencing, which is very important for pigs because they're very intelligent. They're very they intelligent. They out like a shot. You can see them walk up to the fence and listen yeah, okay, and see on. if it's on. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> there was a friend of mine who used to raise pork. He's too old now and he doesn't anymore. And he used to raise pork and there was one time when he had a pig who would get to the other side of the paddock when it decided it wanted to move. And it would start squealing, standing still, pawing its hoof, mm. squealing, run the full length of the paddock and go through the electric fence like it was psyching because it was up. psyching itself up to get electrocuted and get through the fence. <laughs> and it was so on. funny. And I could see Mim. And I remember being there one time and Mim was shaking his head. Oh God, there goes yeah. that pig. Yeah. He's going to get out. Yeah. And I was yeah. going, what are you talking about? Yeah. And he said, just look down the field over there. Yeah. And you look down and you can see the pig, its tail almost <laughs> spinning yeah. as it hurled itself yeah. across the paddock through the electric fence they they really oh i could totally see that in my head because they are incredibly intelligent and i feel like um by honoring that intelligence yes. and letting them exhibit their intrinsic instincts yes um that's a happy pig too that's a happy pig that exactly comes through in the meat so what we do every day we have a square area it's electrified, it's about uh, 25 meters by 25 meters, and we set up another paddock next door to that. So the next day when we go in to feed them, we turn the electric fence off, we lift the fence up, and the pigs just walk straight through into their new paddock. And um, and then we roll their hut, their hut comes along. Their hut them, comes along and, and the water, water comes, comes along, along yeah. Them. And you'll just find then that they leave this delicate balance of just, um, disturbing the ground enough so that it gives an opportunity to aerate for new things to grow without actually digging it up. Yeah. And obviously because they're fed on a fermented oat diet, what comes out the other end of the pig is great for the soil. It's well. great for the soil because the fermentation as well as everything else. Yeah, and it also breaks down a lot easier because they consume a lot of grass, which a yes. lot of people don't realize. But the first thing they do when they go into a new paddock is they'll graze and they'll just eat grass, you know, like they'll eat a lot of grass. Yeah, yeah. And then they'll go back and they'll start digging up the things that we might Like the roots and grubs, yeah. the leatherheads, the, yeah. the larvae, the worms, worms the beetles. 
thistles. And the things that we consider problems like docks and thistles, they will go for the roots. They'll go for the roots. Once and they love the in, roots. They love the roots, yeah, yeah. because they're fibrous and especially, you know. Well, nettles are one of the most nutritious roots and horses in the winter love digging them out and eating them. It's funny with the nettles, they kind of avoid the nettles. No, but that's because the stinging bit. top bit. Yeah, but I good. bet you, if you forked the nettles over yeah. and exposed the roots, yeah, yeah, yeah. those pigs are going to be eating those nettle roots. Yeah. And they are highly nutritious. Yeah. Nettles always yeah. grow in the best soil. Yeah. yeah. So I bet if you did an experiment and you fenced in an area that had a bit of a nettle patch and you went in with a fork and forked the nettles so that the they pigs could get to the it. roots, mm -hmm. they, would they would get right into it. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. That's something for next year. We'll yeah, try. To try that, yeah. I also kind of really believe, um, we say this a lot about our eggs, that the hens, because they have such a varied diet, they're not just eating a concentrate, that those nutrients, the variation in the nutrients they get from the soil go into their eggs. So The same with the, the meat. The same thing with the meat. The broad because, spectrum, I'm totally in agreement with you. And, you know, it's amazing because quite often... Uh, a particular time of the year, there's a particular type of plant, the pigs will go in and fight over a particular type of plant. And I'm sure it's because, you know, it's like why they, you know, blackberries full of vitamin C yeah. in the hedges, you know, exactly. they'll go straight for it because they know themselves exactly what they need and what, and their what they'd needs. like and what their body needs. Yeah. And we've yeah. kind of lost that instinct with yeah. all the artificial preservatives, which hit our Unami, or what? It, what is it called? The what is that uh, Japanese term? Um, umami. Umami. Umami is the taste. The yes, that is that is the sixth flavor, which yeah. gets drives you on to eat more of something. Yeah. And the preservate the food preservative industry has hit that with a chemical um, preference, which humans, as humans, we want more of. Which is why so many people are fine eating processed foods because the umami uh, mineral mix has been conquered and that's why we're not realizing when we're eating stuff that's bad for us. Yeah. Our instinct yeah. is being conditioned out yeah. of us uh, yeah. by the deliciousness of the preservative yeah. mix. And I 100% agree with that. You know yourself this time of the year, if you had nothing else to eat that you would go to the hedge and you would forage... Um, Blackberries. Oh, totally. You know, or you do something with the rose hip, or yes. you eat the apple. Or you yes. Know, and it's funny because when we um, move the pigs and the sheep, we always give them access to the hedges because the hedges are just brimming full of things. All like kinds that, of things. Yeah. The vitamins that they probably need. They love. They love to eat blackberries. You know, like us. Who wouldn't? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so, there isn't an animal I even I say that's my blackberry flavor. Yeah. <laughs> no, but at least my dogs love um, black, all animals, foxes, dogs, yeah. everything. Yeah. Look, look at who's watching us. No, you're not coming in to eat the meat. Oh, my God. Oh, mustard. Yes. Wants to mustard. come in. No, sorry. 